Just one moment and you can go live now. Okay. Calling the meeting to order. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest and general nature thereof? Being none, okay. Item three, approval or amendments to meeting agenda. <clears throat> Through your worship, be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the committee of the whole meeting dated May 5th, 2020 as presented. Okay, we need a mover and a seconder. Matthew and Joe. All in favor? Carried. Okay, item four, approval of minutes of a regular council meeting, April 21st, 2020. Be resolved that council approve the following minutes as presented, regular meeting of council, April 21st, 2020. Mover and a seconder, please. Bill, uh, Pat, all in favor? Doug, I didn't, uh, okay. Okay, uh, any business arising from the minutes? None? No. Uh, inquiries, members of general public, none either. Delegations and presentations, we have none at this time. Uh, business arising from delegations of presentation staff and committee reports 9.1 administration report update utility billing on property taxes Brian could you uh... certainly be it resolved through your uh, through your worship be it resolved that council accept the staff recommendations from the administration staff report on utility billing uh, on the property taxes based on as presented to council on um, April 7th, 2020, and then updated on May 5th, 2020, and direct staff to give public notice of the implementation as of January 1st, 2021, and to prepare and or, and or amend the necessary bylaw. Any questions or comments about utility billing? No. That's very good. Go ahead, Matthew. Uh, it's just a comment. It, it seems pretty straightforward. It's going to be flat rate, which is great. Um, but I don't know if we can discuss it now too in detail. There are a few residents in the area that are quite concerned with the levy based uh, charges to pay taxation for garbage and, and street lighting. Yes. I was wondering. It's not on the agenda at the moment. So for next committee to hold, maybe we can uh, make sure it's on the agenda. And I believe that would probably be a uh, topic for uh, budget mm -hmm. deliberations. Would that suit uh, everybody's fancy or? Mm -hmm. Okay. No other comments? Well. Go ahead, Bill. So, so just step back a sec here. Uh, we're, we're, we're saying our utility bill is going to be flat rate, but our currently the way it's set up, that are garbage and what else did you did Matthew say? Uh, garbage and what? Street garbage lights. and street lights are are currently uh, set based on one's assessment, property assessment. Is that correct? No. Ryan? That's that's what I'm. I, that's what I hear. That's what I heard. Or did I hear it wrong? We'll have to get back to you on that, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I understand, it. I understand okay. it's the same for everyone. Is it the what same for everyone? Too. I thought it was a flat rate. Yeah, flat rate, yeah. So Go ahead, Matthew. I'm, I'm looking at a document here that uh, I received from our, our deputy clerk outlining special charges, and it clearly indicates in this document anyway that lights and garbage are levy-based. And that's the concern that people are having. If we're going to be rolling utilities in, some reassurance that a they're not going to be levy based, which they're not. That's great, but right. this is something that we should really look into and discuss because 
with the varying property values here in cobalt, for instance, it doesn't seem to be very fair to have a set cost such as garbage where we all have the same amount of bins that we can load up each week or every two weeks uh, based upon a municipal levy or an assessment. Great. Okay. Any more comments? Bill? So bottom line, so bottom line what, what Matthew's referring to is based on levy, then the higher you're paying property tax, the more you would pay for the garbage and the street lighting service. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, that's not fair, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, at budget time, we can we can change that, I believe, to whatever council decides they want to how they want to put it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, just keep that in mind for budget uh, discussions. And need a mover in the if there's no more questions, comments, and need a mover in the seconder. Uh, your, your Worship. Oh, sorry, Doug. Uh, just a question. If we're going to discuss all of the other items at the budget time, why wouldn't we defer this to budget time as well? And do it all all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. Yeah. Any cons Any 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 problems with that? Everybody happy <clears throat> with that procedure? Okay. Good. Can we get a mover and a seconder, please? Could Matthew and sorry. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Sorry. Uh, Your Worship, can you please read that motion again? Okay. okay. <clears throat> Ryan? Sure, Your Worship. Be it resolved that Council accepts the staff recommendations from Administrative Staff Report on Utility Billing of, sorry, of utility billing on property tax bills as presented to Council on April 7th and then updated on May 5th, 2020 and direct staff to give public notice of the implementation as of January 1st, 2021, and to prepare or amend the necessary bylaw. Okay, thank you. Joe? I thought we were deferring this. We're not accepting this right now. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. So we need a motion to defer this to budget discussions? That's right. Doug? I'm just going to move to defer. Okay. I'll second it. Will? All in yep. favor? Terry. Okay, correspondence. Spring Pulse Poetry Festival update. It looks like Mr. Wilco, uh, Mr. Wilco, Mr. Bridges is going to be canceling his uh, poetry festival this, this spring. And he thanks us for the work we've done for him in the past. Basically, all there is to it, I guess. Nothing else. Everybody's read it, and it's unfortunate, but sign of the times, I guess. Eh? Yep. Okay, we have a motion on that, Brian. <clears> Through <throat> your worship, be it resolved that council approve the correspondence item 10.1 as presented. Mover and a seconder, please. Pat and Joe, all in favor? Carried. Other business, 11.1, cobalt water treatment plant programming changes for filter backwash. Brian, could you fill us in on this uh, information, please? Yes, Your Worship, through you, Your Worship. We have a proposal here from NLS Engineering that was provided by uh, EXP. Uh, and this is uh, to do additional programming 
in order to provide changes of how the backwash system is working with the water treatment plant. We need to take the uh, programming uh, and make changes to it so that the backwash system operates as it originally did uh, before uh, we went into this uh, upgrade of the system. Uh, we've been having to run the backwash system manually uh, and our public works guys have been going in on a very regular basis, including overtime in the evenings and on weekends to manually shut down the system perform the backwash, and then turn the system back on. Uh, there's a software uh, rewrite that can be done, programming on the system, and, um, and the cost uh, in this quote is for those modifications, $1,600 plus HST. Go ahead, Joe. Just got a question. Is this what we discussed before we approved this place to build those brackets and we wouldn't have this problem again yep go ahead would you like me to answer the question I'd like you to answer that question okay. definitely through your worship uh, to answer Councillor Dubay's question we would um, we went ahead with uh, providing these the uh, stiffening legs to the uh, to the um, piping in order to hope that it would uh, rectify this issue uh, regardless whether it did or didn't, uh, it was necessary so that the system wouldn't uh, uh, be too disruptive when the when it kicks in for uh, for that going from distribution to backwash. So the what has happened is it didn't resolve the problem as we hoped it might. So then we're going into this programming uh, reprogramming of the software or adding an additional portion of software. Uh, programming so that we can rectify the situation. Go ahead, Joe. Just a question. When we discussed this about the brackets, apparently this fixed it. We talked to them. Every time we turn around, they're slamming us with more money all the time. And honestly, I think, uh, speaking for the town folks, I think they're going to get upset with this over and over. It's always costing us money. This is not a big deal compared to everything else we have. Can we get like a warranty or guarantee that this is going to be the end? We can try. Mm -hmm. Now I understand this is a software program. It's uh, the timing of the filters. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I know it's a it's a computer. It's computer language. Uh, the stiff legs that we did put in were to stop vibration from uh, setting off the uh, the meter. No, this is supposed to be changing the timing of the filters. I'm just hoping we're not going to have other surprises. Well, so am I. Bill? Uh, so, okay, oh so my God. through you, your worship. Uh, so, the, so as I understand, the program uh, will do the automatic backwash, which would not, which would help us in the sense that it'll keep our cost down because we don't have to send anybody in from from PW to do that, correct? Absolutely. So right now what they're doing is that they're doing it manually. Is that correct? Until that this works. Correct. Okay. So part of the program then, as I understand, will assume that function. I, have, okay. I understand that it will. Okay. Thank you. Your worship? Yeah. Go ahead, Beth. Angela. Okay. Um, I don't know. Can you see my screen? I can see your yeah. screen, but you're only uh, partial. You're only. Okay. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong. From what I understand, from what Brian said, we're paying them to put it back to the way it was before we did the upgrade. Not to my knowledge. No. Go ahead, Brian. Can you answer that? Yeah, true, Your Worship. Uh, what we're needing to do is to add additional um, software programming so that the plant will operate as it did for the backwash portion. The backwash portion, uh, the backwash system is not as sophisticated and, uh, and has not been upgraded uh, in this upgrade that we've done of the water treatment plant. And uh, with the programming that was applied for the backwash isn't working in an optimum way and is uh, causing us to have issues and challenges with it. So we need to change the programming in order to have the backwash system run the way it did initially prior to this project. 
Okay. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, just a question on timing, Your Worship. I note uh, the date on the proposal is March 19th, 2020. Today we're May 5th. I'm just wondering why it has taken apparently so long to get to us because we have been paying a lot of overtime to the staff to go in and do this function. Yeah. I can't answer that question. I don't know. Go ahead, Brian. Through your worship, I can't answer the question. We, we did not proceed with this. Uh, it, uh, what we did was we waited to see if the, um, if the stiff legs that were put in, the supports that were put in on the, uh, on the piping would sufficiently remove the turbidity that was the issue um, for the valves uh, when the backwash was uh, initiating. Uh, that did, uh, proved not to resolve the issue, so now we're going in this direction. Is there any more uh, discussion, uh, Bill? Uh, I'm confused. Uh, uh, I'm, just, I'm thinking that this program that they're installing is going to do an automatic backwash. So what's that got to do with the stiff legs uh, being installed? Like what would the stiff legs accomplish? How would the stiff legs, which is completely mechanical, allow the thing to backwash? The reason for the stiff legs going in, if I'm not mistaken, were because they, there was vibration that was setting off alarms. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's why the post were going to be to put in to stop the pipes from vibrating, which uh, the alarm module was on uh, on the side of one of the post, or not the post, but the side of the filter, and it would stop the vibration. That was the reason for the leg, the, the legs to go in. So we the other we're issue is a, a computer uh, issue. So that therefore there, there therefore there are two issues we're dealing with. Obviously, yes, there are. Okay. 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 Yeah. Hey, do we have a mover? Did you uh, do you want to reread that, uh, Brian, or <clears throat> through your worship? Any comments on it. Yes. Be it resolved that council approve the request to change the programming for the backwash sequencing in order to improve the operation of the filters backwashing process during normal operation. Council has chosen NLS engineering to do the PLC programming work at the cost of $1,600 plus HST and that the cost be placed under the funding of the water treatment plant upgrade project by way of change order through the contingency. Move over to seconder. Bill, uh, Doug, did you have a... I just wanted to make another comment, George. Um, because this is costing us overtime at the plant every weekend when the guys go in to do the filter backwashes, could we perhaps have a special meeting tomorrow or the next day to approve this specifically so that we can get on with getting the changes made? Save ourselves a bit of money? Okay, we can look into when they can show her. Yeah, uh, Brian, sorry. Yeah, so if we pass this resolution um, in this meeting, we don't need to have a special meeting. The order will be placed uh, first thing in, in the morning and they will proceed with the work right away. Point of order, Your Worship. Uh, this is a committee of the whole meeting by our rules and procedures. We don't pass motions in this meeting. Right. Okay. So you can find out what the uh, what the time plan is, Doug. How is that? And uh, if they can come and get it done immediately, let's do it. Well, I think we can get it authorized. And the best, the fastest way to do that is a special meeting in a couple of days or whatever. Uh, then it's done, and they can they can fit whatever time they can into it. But let's get it approved and let it moving. Get it moving. Okay. okay. We need a, we have a mover and a seconder. Doug and Pat. All in favor. Carried. Okay. Okay. Eleven point two. Community safety signage. Traffic issues for discussion. I don't have any information on that. So. Through your worship, uh, Councillor Johnson had asked to have this added to the agenda, and he would like to speak to the matter. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Through you, Your Worship. 
I've been contacted by three separate ratepayers here in town with concerns over uh, our immediate area, well, all through town, uh, turning into a raceway of sorts. We have numerous accounts of vehicles exceeding the speed limit, especially through the downtown area. And we're asking, or the, the ratepayers are all asking for community safety and or children at play signage to be posted in specific areas of Cobalt. Um, the one area in particular, uh, down in the downtown area here, it seems to be the favorite loop of quite a few of these vehicles. Argentite, uh, Silver Street, and Silver Lane seem to be an area where they're, they're looping on various vehicles, whether it's ATV, uh, sport car, street bike, etc. The rate of speed as to which they are running doesn't allow for any time for anybody to react, and we are we are seeing uh, an increase in traffic with the nice weather here. So, the ratepayers again, uh, residents have asked uh, if we could look into putting up some community safety signage and working with the OPP to possibly come in and try and take care of this problem before we have a serious issue. Okay. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Well, if it's this, yeah, I mean, if this is continuing or if this is actually happening, uh, I would suggest make a section of the town community safe zone. Make it a safety zone? A community safe zone. Safety zone, safety zone? okay. With, 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 a, with a speed limit and the fines are significantly increased if you're caught. Okay. Sure. As they have with schools. Mm -hmm. Matthew? The con I, I totally agree with Councillor Gavani. I think that's a great idea. The concern being now we have a posted speed limit of 40 kilometers an hour. And I can tell you, uh, at our home in particular, we have traffic passing at least double that, if not more. And a lot of these machines that are coming by are built for speed. So they are using our downtown area because the twists and turns is more of a rally circuit than anything else. And we really need to get that under control before, again, someone gets hurt. Is there any particular time that this is going on at? At, at the present time down here, it's happening probably about anywhere from midday through till 10, 11 at night. We have a number of street bikes that have been coming out with the nice weather here that are, are continuing to do that through all hours of the night into the wee hours of the morning as of late. And again, a particular uh, particular need is there before someone gets harmed. Okay. Councilor Angelus? Um, it actually starts, sorry, Matthew, uh, Councilor Johnson, it actually starts at about 7.30 in the morning. Well. Um, you can hear them coming into town and the speed is very excessive. Um, and I agree with the community safe zone because the fines are actually doubled, the same as in a construction zone. Okay, so what's the procedure now for doing a community safety zone? Can, yeah. Can we direct staff to investigate that? We can. Please. And in the meanwhile, could you talk to uh, your, your connections and... Uh... He's going to tell me the same thing he keeps telling me is if somebody sees it, report it. Because they can't be here, guaranteed to be here when it's happening. Okay, well, mm -hmm. could I suggest something? Maybe we could put it on our Facebook page also. Doug? I'm thinking you could put it on the signs too, saying, you know, if you see something, please call and give the OPP number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, Angela. Um, that leads me to uh, can we get our Crime Stoppers posters put up? Yeah. Because we can add it to the bottom of them. Okay. Pat? No. You can't stop it unless you've got an OPP officer sitting out there gets the speed and do it. That, that requires someone being there all the time or else there is, um, I don't know whether we could do it with the various cameras downtown. I know uh, Halliburry had one of those signs that when you drove past them years ago, it said what speed. So if you had two of our outdoor um, signs like at the Fraser 
and one showing the the car enough to get a license plate, and the other showing the sign and the speed that they're going at. Might that be proof enough? I don't know. I, you know, it's always been a problem. Yeah, Matthew. I, uh, I agree that that would be something to look into. But at the present time, the the applicable signage, the Crime Stopper signage, the Community Safety Zone signage. Mm -hmm. That, I believe, is the avenue we need to go down. We need to show the community that we're mobilizing and addressing the situation before we get too complicated and nothing happens. So maybe the step one would be the initial signage and the development of a community safety zone. And then step two would be looking into the, the cameras and or technology to, to help the police with their job. If you show that you're doing something to the uh, you're doing something for the community they're going to mobilize and start making those complaints they're going to take ownership of the of their community by showing that we're being active and trying to be proactive to fix the problem Bill? um i i think uh i understand where councillor anderson's coming from but if the opp know that they've got a zone where people are actually speeding uh, I think they're going to follow up because if some of you have noticed when you drive from uh, Cobalt to, to, and, and you get into yeah. when you pass the abutments just before you get into North Cobalt, there's a 50, um, uh, 50 kilometer zone that drops from 80 to 50. The OPP are right around the corner and I don't know how many guys they've caught there, but it's a favorite spot for them. And the reason they, and that's just the start of Tamiskaming Shores. And the reason they were there is because there was reported a lot of people speed and they still catch people there. So, you know, once they know that uh, there's a problem in town, I think they can, it's easy to set up. I mean, they set up for 15 minutes, they go somewhere else. Yeah. Angela. Um, and I think it's also important for residents to know that even if they get a description of the vehicle and even a partial of the license plate, they can still report it. I've done two reports this past week. And they've had, they have had discussions with both of the vehicles in question. And they are now on their radar. Okay. Good. Yeah. So um, that goes a long way towards being able to pinpoint these people. Okay. So you still want staff to the community safety zone, what it entails? Yes. Okay. You got that, Brian? Please. Any more discussion on it? Just educate people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, could we ask uh, Brian to get back to us sometime between now and next council meeting so that we can be familiar with it when we uh, pass it? Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, I'm going to agree with Bill and with Matt. The best sign is an OPP sign to solve this problem. Uh, so certainly I would say let's contact them and ask them to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. That's it for 11.2. Okay, 11.3, Tamiskaming Transit Committee update for discussion. Everybody got their information there. Pat, do you want to lead this, please, if you don't mind? And I can jump in whenever. I'm just trying to get it open here. Okay. Oh, pick an account. Ah. It's just not letting me in. Okay, anyway. Okay. We, do you have the numbers there? What we were discussing was with people not being charged for the bus now. Um, I believe everyone got in an email the, um, the, the budget changes and the transit this year is gonna cost us considerably more, but uh, that's the only way we can, we can do it right now. We've got people riding the bus, we can't charge them because we don't want them near the driver. So they're riding the bus for free and that's lost income. So it comes out to our share was up another, it's gonna be up another 23,000? Uh, our numbers are Cobalt's projected contribution for 2020 increased from $40,000 to $71,000. An increase of $4,040. So that's quite, uh, go ahead uh, Angela. Does that reflect um, the reduced schedule that they keep running in Cobalt because of break? The schedule? Where we're getting half the service um, a lot of the time because of their breakdowns of the buses. I can't tell you. I can't answer that question. That's... Mm. 
Go ahead, Pat. It's just re it's reflecting the loss of income for the number of people that are getting on the bus. That's what they were calculating it on, the number of people using the bus and what the loss of income was. The serve the free bus was first implemented to assist people in getting to their jobs that don't have a method of getting there, that don't have a vehicle. And secondly, to assist seniors to go shopping, to go to medical appointments, to go to the hospital or whatever. Fortunately, as happens with everything, there's joyriding that goes on and there's a bunch of young people which they are now monitoring and bus drivers will not stop if they see five people gathered at a stop at a bus stop at eight o'clock at night. Because they're definitely not going anywhere that they, they have to go to do shopping or anything like that. So that's what the problem has been is the ridership has been up for that reason and it causes uh, dilemmas on the bus. But uh, it is a, a losing proposition as every other transit is. Go ahead, Andrew. So if they're basing these numbers on the ridership during this time that they've lost the fares on, does that include these joy riders as well? Absolutely, it's all lost ridership. If they would be mm -hmm. paying. Doug? Um. Well, this strikes me as being very much leading into our next topic that's on the agenda. But I'm thinking, and, and you know, I can perfectly understand why ridership is down, and we want it to be down because we don't want social, well, we want social distancing, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's an extraordinary cost to the municipalities uh, because of COVID-19. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't be sending a letter ourselves to our provincial government asking for financial help to help offset these kinds of costs. The transit committee is in the process of doing that, uh, Councillor. But we can send one off so it wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind at all if we send it ourselves for ourselves. Mm -hmm. okay. The more the merrier. Yeah. Councillor Anderson, any more to add? Um, no, I don't think so. They were talking, um, we, did, we did go through with the, um, uh, with the drivers as well you know any of their concerns and what and um their safety issues and everything so we've had we've had a meeting um i made it in on one i think you may have made it in on the other with yeah. uh the meetings with the the bus drivers go in two different shifts so so we have been conferring with them as well to make things as safe as as we can as a transit authority although stock is the one that is responsible for them and let's create some difficulties Matthew you had something to get there. into those files so <laughs> yeah yep. ahead, your Matt. worship uh, my question is uh, materials and supplies the $35,000 increase can we get some insight as to why we have the $35,000 increase is that for personal protective equipment or is that that is personal protective equipment for the drivers. They've tried to put, they put barriers to protect the drivers from the, the riders, uh, different things along that nature. I, I, I don't know the whole gist of it all, but things along nope, that that's, that's fine. I just wanted some clarification on that. That's fine. Thank you. Anyways, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be monitored and it's going to be going on a month to month basis. We're going to have, be having another meeting at the end of this month to see the viability, what, if, if anything changes, if it's still worth doing it or, continue doing it you know, until COVID, I guess, dies down. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be on a month to month to propose that. Yeah, it's the same for every transit authority, unfortunately. Um, all of them up here, and Timmins is all free, the same thing. So everyone's losing big time. And, uh, and then we have the problem, they have the problem as well with the buses going down because our buses are on the road for 14 hours a day, is it? Something like that. And all the mileage that goes on, they need maintenance all the time. And at this time, trying to get through, get parts and everything up here for the servicing is really difficult. So that's all slowed down. And uh, I know we're down to two buses now, and I'm not sure whether we're down to one. And our road conditions don't help either, so. Oh, no, no. Our road conditions pound pound it terribly okay yeah is that it for the transit just to keep us up we'll keep you uh, updated on that uh, after our next meeting mm -hmm. as to any changes okay 11 for review 
bylaw 20, 2005 14 ATV for just ATV bylaw for discussion. Councillor Ad, uh, Ad said you wanted to uh, discuss this. Um, yeah, I've, I've reviewed the bylaw and it's pretty robust. However, there are a few things. Our old bylaw used to have um, something in it that said that it's for point A to point B mm -hmm. um, to go to a trail, um, but not for riding throughout town. Mm -hmm. um, because part of the problem is the enforcement of our current bylaw, obviously, because this bylaw does indicate that they're supposed to be on the shoulder of the road at all times, not in the road. They're not supposed to have tra uh, passengers and they're not supposed to be going over 20 kilometers an hour, which I can tell you for a fact, <laughs> it's all happening. They have passengers, they're doing well over 20 kilometers an hour and they're going down the middle of the road. So, I think in order to further restrict it, and unfortunately there is going to be some blowback on it because some people aren't going to be happy about it, but we restrict the riding, riding of them in town as a vehicle. They are a recreational vehicle meant to be used on trails in the bush. They're not meant to be a road vehicle. Uh, I don't want to touch... Uh... <laughs> Not well, I have no problem here. being the bad guy on this one. I'm sorry. It, it's been abused, George, and it's been abused to the point now where it's infringing on the enjoyment of anybody else's has of their own property. Okay, Doug? Uh, just to point out, a lot of people are using four-wheelers to plow snow in the winter, mm -hmm. and I think we have to be careful the kind of rules and regulations we put around that use. Well, plowing snow is usually on your own property, not out on the roadway. No, it's quite often moving snow from your property to other parts. Yeah. Joe? That's against the law. Hey, it's Joe. I, I agree with Councillor Adsid. Okay, I see it here across the way here in this parking lot in front of me. There's like donuts every time. The mm -hmm. quads are, they're, they're all over here. Yeah. Like, I'm not, not telling everybody. There's a lot of people following the rules correctly, but you got the odd few. Mm -hmm. Make a note of them. Call them in. By the time you look at them, they're gone. So mm. it's it's not as easy as you think, Pat. Yeah, it's I hard know. to get it. To get them. <laughs> that and lawn tractors. What are my lawn tractors all over town? Okay, so what is your uh, what is your recommendation, Councillor Adsed? Well, one, I think we need to tighten it up, not just to include ATVs, but all recreation vehicles with the exemption for handicapped conveyances, because we don't want people who drive scooters, handicapped scooters. But I think we also have to clarify that they have to be definitely be an approved handicap vehicle mm -hmm. so that we don't have somebody claiming they're using their lawnmower as their handicap vehicle, <laughs> which I could see happening. Mm -hmm. we, gotta, we just got to tighten some of the loopholes so that when we do get a valid, um, get some valid enforcement, that we're giving them something that they can actually work with. Okay, so would you be willing to look at that bylaw and? Uh... I've got I've got some notes, but I don't know how a bylaw is supposed to read in order to stand up in the court. Well, it just makes suggestions. I I, I don't know either. I'm not. Uh... You know, I just want to make sure we're not penalizing the people who are handicapped that use the electric wheelchairs or scooters, um, because I know that tends to happen on the bike path between here and Nalisgard. Um, apparently you're not supposed to be on there with scooters or wheelchairs. Um, but at the same time, I want to make it so that people aren't joy riding around town because we've got ones that don't have valid exhaust systems. They're spewing exhaust all over the place in clouds. There's no muffler systems on them, which is all a contravention of our current bylaw. Mm -hmm. Bill? And it's also contraventions of the law itself. If you've got no muffler, you have to have, yeah, you can be charged for that. Uh, the other thing is, I didn't know that uh, the, the, the road that goes through town, is that part of the highway, Highway 11? Or do we own it? We own it. Okay. So it's considered a major, major route, right? I mean, that's, mm -hmm. and I see, I see ATVs on them all the time. 
And I did not know that we had a, a bylaw that for, kind of forbids that. I mean, if you're going from point A to point B, but I mean, if you're driving from North Cobalt and you're coming all the way through town and then going back and back and forth, that's not A to B to me. And I think that could be, I think that area could be tightened up because uh, I do see a lot of ATVs that are riding, particularly riding on the highway. I call it the highway. That's the major route through town. And as, as Councillor Atset said, uh, double passengers. And now, uh, like I have an ATV, but I have a proper seat that at the back. You just can't put somebody on an ATV unless you have a proper seat. And it's got to be an approved seat. So uh, a lot of these people are going through town, don't have approved seats. So they're, it's breaking the law. So somehow that has to be tightened up. I agree. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Edson. If you go to section three of the bylaw, it reads that um, there is only one driver, no passenger on all, all train vehicles. Yeah, okay. Period. Yeah. Um, that's a bylaw? That is the current that's bylaw. The bylaw. Okay. There is no point A to point B in our current bylaw any longer. Okay. Um, it was in our old bylaw, but it's not in the new bylaw. The only restrictions on driving in the new bylaw that I was able to um, find were that it has to be driven on the shoulder of the road. You cannot impede traffic and you cannot pass unless you can safely do so and return back to the shoulder of the road. Okay. And it has to be a slower moving vehicle that you are passing. Mm -hmm. I noticed that this bylaw is not signed by the mayor or the clerk, so I don't even know if this bylaw ever went through. Oh. Did it, Brian? Maybe we should look into those. Sorry, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, through your worship. Yes, that is uh, that is um, a bylaw that's been adopted uh, in 2005. And if I could add a comment, if you don't mind your worship through you. Yeah. We, uh, there's a significant um, revisions uh, to the Highway Traffic Act uh, since 2005, being 15 years ago. Uh, also, there are... Um, uh, components of that under the Highway Traffic Act, Part X.3, Off-Road Vehicles. Uh, we have the Motorized Snow Vehicles Act. We have the Off-Road Vehicles Act. Um, and there's also a handbook. We have three guides uh, that I have passed forward to Council as well for your information so that we can make a good decision. And I do have some sample bylaws from other municipalities um, that we can use in, in guidance to uh, put a, a proper bylaw or revision uh, to our existing bylaw. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Ratzed. Um, and I'd also like to see our bylaw um, encompass not just all terrain vehicles, but all um, recreational vehicles, be it side by sides. I believe they're called UTVs, mm -hmm. um, the all terrain and snow machines. Okay. Let's, let's get it all in one bylaw. Go ahead, Brian. Yes, through, through your worship, yes. They've upgraded the language, so now they're calling them off-road vehicles, OFRs, or ORVs, sorry, um, that, and that's all encompassing of, of two-wheel, three-wheel, four-wheel, six-wheel drive uh, vehicles and whatnot. Okay, Bill? I, I'm agreeable to doing this and, and you know, putting some teeth into the bylaw, uh, but let's, let's be mindful of the fact that we do have, uh, we're, we're living in the North, we do have some uh, good people in town who, you know, I know uh, take their ATVs and they cross the roads perpendicular. They don't see them driving downtown. They're just going out to the trails. So let's make sure that if we, if we uh, draw up a, uh, another bylaw that we're not hurting those legitimate type people. Matthew? Mm -hmm. Further to Councillor Gavani's point, I I'm in agreement, but maybe we can establish crossing areas that are adjacent to the trails that they're, they're trying to get to just so we can establish a set area where they can cross that road. Yeah. Okay, so we'll have uh, staff look into this when time permits because uh, it's not really a appropriate time to be doing the, a lot of this stuff, unfortunately. Go ahead, Councillor. Um, I'm gonna also continue going through the material that Brian emailed and see if I can come up with mm -hmm. some notes to assist staff if uh, Brian is uh, agreeable to that. Mm -hmm. Any okay. help? Or, and anyone else who has any 
Go ahead, Doug. I'm wondering, it, it's, it's very difficult to imagine how we're going to do this as a group uh, over, over these kinds of setups. Exactly. Uh, and I think it's unfair, to, as you were saying, to throw this all at Brian on top of everything else at the moment. Yeah. Uh, but I'm wondering if we could do some kind of a uh, dispersal system for all of this information and then find a way to feed back into the system so we can have an ongoing conference about it. And eventually, I, I think it's important that we come to some kind of a new uh, bylaw relatively soon. You know, it, it, these things are going on all summer. And, uh, you know, the sooner we get it done, the better. But uh, there's got to be a way we're going to have to coordinate this so we can do it all. I'd love to see yeah, the other sample bylaws uh, that Brian referred to. Uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff. And I would love to have a chance for all of us to confer one way or another, either by emails or through another Zoom meeting sometime. Yeah. Councillor Ad said, last one, please. Um, yeah, if everybody wants to, if we want to communicate via email, I can put it all together in one document to make it easier to, for the staff to um, go through it and see what they can come up with. Yeah, because right now the staff is very, very uh, busy trying to get a, somewhere with the budget, getting our budget out. So yeah. I'm afraid that this will have to be on a back burner for the time mm -hmm. being until we can get some time freed up. Well, I can coordinate okay? um, all the suggestions and um, put yeah. it in a, an, an, an easier to digest and read format. Okay. Well done. Good. Next item, 11.5, letter to... Prime Minister Trudeau, financial aid plan. Has everybody had an opportunity to read this? Mm -hmm. Comments, concerns? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Not really my forte, but I read this and I, I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> okay, go ahead, uh, Doug. I'm with Joe. Uh, why don't we have that on our next council meeting's agenda to approve the letter and have it sent? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Everybody's good with that? Okay. Yeah. And. Oh, Go ahead, Brian. Uh, so, through your worship, be it resolved that council receive other business items 11.2 to 11.5 as items for discussion. Mover and a seconder, please. Matthew and Angela, all in favor? Carried. Okay, closed session. Through your worship, be it resolved that council convene in closed session for the purpose of approving closed session minutes and as per subsection 239 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended in order to address a matter pertaining to subsection 2B, personnel matter um, about an unidentifiable individual including municipal or local board employees, subject matter employee performance reviews, and 3.1 educational or training sessions, council training with integrity commission. Okay, so what do we, we get out of this meeting now and? Just need a mover and a seconder. And mover, oh, sorry, mover and a seconder, Pat and Joe. All in favor? Carried. So what's so going to we, happen is I'm, I'm going to end the meeting here. We're going to stop the recording, end the meeting, and we're going to go into the closed session um, meeting that's, uh, that I emailed to you just a short, short while ago. Okay. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time, darling. Hi, Dar. <laughs>
None. Okay, confirmation bylaw, draft motion. Yes, Angela. Were we not supposed to give direction and open of what we discussed and closed? Mm -hmm. About the increases? Yes, I believe we were, sorry. No, also about the other as well. The employment? The bylaw? The, bylaw. the bylaw enforcement? We were supposed to, uh, Brian was supposed to get answers for us first, hey? We have to give him direction, don't we? Not in open session. Okay. okay. I have the direction noted. You have the direction? Yes. Okay. And we'll get back to council on that at a later time. Okay. Okay. Can I read the uh, resolution though yes. on the uh, on the other matter? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. My my mistake. I no just problem. Hold on. Uh, through your worship, be resolved that council accept the CAO recommendations on staff performance reviews, and ask him to proceed with the recommendations that he provided. Mover and a seconder. Pat, Joe, all in favor? Carried. Okay, item 14, confirmation by. Through your worship, be it resolved that bylaw number 2020 19 be a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council of the Corporation of the Town of Cobalt be taken as read a first second and third time and finally passed this fifth day of May 2020. And further, that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk and recorded in the bylaw book. Mover and a seconder. Matt and Joe, all in favor? Jerry? Adjournment. Through you again, your worship. Be it resolved that the committee of the whole meeting of council be adjourned at 9.24 p.m. Mover. Bill, seconder Joe, all in favor? Thank you folks, carried.